Welcome to Astra Berlin, where I'm with Barney from legendary Napalm Death. I okay. Is I okay? I don't know. <laughs> so, first of all, thank you for this interview. No and, problem. Uh, welcome to Berlin. No problem, yeah. Uh, one question that's uh, been on my mind is uh, you've been with Napalm Death for 30 years now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, grindcore is uh, basically a niche genre. So, uh, what's the secret magic that you have that keeps you guys going? Well, I mean, the, what I would say is that it's, you could argue that it's no longer a niche genre because there's many, it's obviously grown exponentially since I was, I first started and before even I started, it was growing then, you know, but, um, um, I mean, the thing is, is that with us, we just, it's almost like riding a bike, you know. We know the way we want to express ourselves musically and lyrically to an extent. And so we just do it. So the the uh, the noise and the concrete mix of sound is like, it's natural to us, you know. So we just keep able to write fresh, um, give fresh ideas within that sound. So we keep doing it, you know. And it seems to work, you know, for us, you know. Yeah, yeah, you are clearly on a tour now. And I looked at your tour dates and it's uh, got some crazy, like, 16 days days straight. Gigs. Yeah, yeah. So how do you survive that? You just have to. You just have to take care of yourself a little bit. Um, um, and obviously understand that the most important thing in, in those days is that one hour, one hour for us at night, you know, and, and try and keep yourself in the best condition to to do that, you know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it doesn't bother me too much, you know. I'll just, I'm just always optimistic that I'll be able to do it, no problem, unless I do what I did in the States and break my ankle and on stage and, you know, have to play the rest of the tour on a chair. If that's what I have to do, then that's what I'll do, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what kind of tour life does Napalm Dead lead now? Very, very not that much different to any any other piece of part of life in if you weren't on tour, you know? Mm. So do the personal day-to-day -day stuff, you know, pull the computer out for a little bit, um, pay the bills back at home unfortunately um I read a lot of books um go out and see berlin as i did earlier on um for the hundredth time um yeah and just i guess regular stuff really nothing spectacular you know okay uh i bet nobody has ever asked you this before but do you have any news about the next album well it's 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 kind of almost finished. Certainly the music is. It's still got to be mixed, I think, uh, mastered, should I say. So it's a little ways off yet, but it's it's done, you know. So it's just in, in the... It's in that process where you think, yes, I've finished my album. Oh, shit, now we've got to do all this stuff you know, before it gets released, so, you know. Yeah, it must have been uh, on your mind a lot lately, but yeah, like, what I'm are your thoughts on the album? What's the, yeah. what's the creative process for this one? Yeah, it was great. Uh, um, my thoughts on it are I'm satisfied that it's achieved what it needed to in terms of it's still extreme as anything, but it moves a couple of steps forward, you know, progression-wise. So that's all you can ask for. You know, and then after that will be up to people to decide, you know, which with the last album, especially, it seemed to be like 100% people liked it, you know, which is fucking weird almost. You know, you kind of have to pinch yourself, you know, when you don't yeah. see tons of like, or at least a little bit of negative reviews coming through, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, Napalm Dead has always been a political band. To you, uh, what's the main problem of our time? Well, here's the thing. You could argue either way because, yeah, I mean, if you... I, I, I have very much come from a... Yes, I have my own ideas, but I've come from a very left-wing 
background you know that was always my mindset and actually my upbringing was in that direction you know so in that sense I'm political but then other days I think to myself what's the point of having things left and right and etc because in the end what really matters is people you know politics doesn't mean anything if it doesn't help people you know so I've got two different kind of things on it so what I'm trying to say is that you could say napalm is political in one respect but you could say also it's apolitical because what it's really about is humanity and human beings and understanding that that's what it's really about so the thing is is that as I was saying actually you were over here in the last interview is that people say yeah the world's really shit right now It's, it's always been like that when was it never shit you know when you look in certain places, of course it was shit. Look, we're in nineteen, we're in twenty twenty now. A hundred years ago, there was an end of a war where a million fucking people. Actually, that's 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 understating it. But what was it? What was the first of war? Like seven million was it? Died like death. That, yeah. I mean, for nothing, you know, for effectively a game of fucking chess, you know, across a small piece of of countryside you know in in the in the lowlands you know in france belgium uh, 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 that that area that's what it was you know a game of fucking chess to suit those who were sitting in some comfortable office somewhere and pushing little pieces around a tactics board you know i mean if that's not a shit world i don't know what is you know so it's always been that way um, I mean, everybody focuses on Donald Trump, you know, right now, and, and understandably so. But he's only one kind of symptom of of things right now. There's many other different things, you know. There's, uh, um, you know, the, the, the lack of... What, what bothers me right now is the, the fucking lack of humanity. You know, people are... People are so... It seems a lot easier that people go oh, those fucking people over there, you know, they're just dirt, you know, and that's how they, that's how they uh, treat people, that's how they um, perceive them. And that's always been there, but it seems more prevalent now, you know, at the moment, and I just don't think that's, it's just fucking disappointing, uh, to put it mildly, you know. Yeah, a little empathy would be nice. It would, (laughs) it would be nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, switching uh, maybe a bit uh, to a local news. It's uh, gentrification. It's like uh, it's I know a global in Berlin, thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it affects every place, like bands locally. And we always ask bands about uh, what do, what do they feel about gentrification and how can bands fight it. Does it um, is it like on your radar? Is it like uh, in thoughts of bigger bands? It, it is. I mean, I think you know. Here's the thing. Uh, it's only one part of it, but I think. For me, it should be a a worldwide thing that should be rent controls. You know, no no landlord should be allowed to to make moves in such a way that the property is driven so ridiculously high. You know, the rent prices. I mean, you cannot have if the idea is to move to a more community based living, which it seems to me like the modern way of thinking is, then you're not going to do that by allowing property speculators to come in and very cleverly sort of place things in different ways. Um, That's just not going to work, you know. So I believe in universal rent controls, you know, and not like like halfway rent controls. I mean serious fucking rent controls, you know, that everybody, that makes places affordable to everybody because you can't have community unless everybody can have an entry point you know amen to that yeah yeah well back to napalm that as as we talked uh 30 years already and successful years so is there still like a, a goal or a dream you would like to achieve with no napalm? actually no and you, and you might think from a from a band that kind of is very expressive about stuff we might have something but it's really not you know my only my only thing is to 
keep making the music that we do. You know, I don't ever want to c- compromise on that, you know, um, because f- for, for my own personal feeling, I always want us to dictate what we do rather than outside um, 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 entities, you know, pressurising us to do certain things. So I always want to do that. That is my goal, to keep the band independent and independently making its own decisions, you know. Um, that's f- for, for sure my my thing. You know, above and beyond that, there are probably more places in the world to play that we haven't yet played, despite the fact that we've been, we did gigs when no other that no other bands had done. You know, we I will say that I will kind of blow our own trumpet and say we were quite pioneering in some respects in some gigs and stuff that we did. Um, so yeah, that that I that's just c- to continue to do that really. You know, make good albums, play good gigs. And, you know, if that ever becomes, if you can ever look inside yourself and say, you know what, this is not what it was. I don't feel the same way about it significantly. Then for me, it's it's over, you know, for me, only speaking for myself. You know. Okay, thank you so much. No problem. I would say break a leg, but yeah, it yeah, yeah. happened, I, I guess. <laughs> I could break the other leg if it's not broken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Don't hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, man. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thank you.